we are back everyone welcome to another episode of exploring avatar thank you so much for being here but of course i said we because i always have my co-host with me drew how are you doing man jerry i'm doing good man um i don't know how many months it's been since we've been on here but i think this is the first time this year <laughs> i believe so so first stream of the year almost halfway through the year but hey you know what it's all in the past. We're going to be consistent from here on out. And hope, you know, you guys will be uh, along with us. Today's a pretty fun show. We're going to talk about the that new amazing concept art that they released for the Avatar experience. They didn't really want to label it a land yet, but we'll get into all that. And then, of course, the first issue of Soul X Journey, the kind of like spin-off comic series to Frontiers of Pandora, the video game. So... That's actually exciting as well. We're kind of like, I think two issues are out. The third one comes out in about one or two weeks. But, you know, we'll take our time. We'll get there, you know, week by week. But so for this one, first issue. But yeah, welcome, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us. And man, like, let us know what's been going on in in your guys' world, especially when it pertains to Avatar and uh drew how have you been man have you been enjoying frontier still like even months later i have been um first i want to say thanks everybody joining us on youtube and for the first time on instagram and i believe we're also on twitter is that right jerry yes on the discovering pandora twitter your instagram and both of our channels on youtube so should be good man and that's exciting i'm glad we can reach maybe some more people um, yeah. But yeah, no, I've, I've been good. I've uh, been loving Frontiers. I've actually got a little over 300 hours in it so far. Damn. Um, <laughs> I got the Platinum Trophy on December 31st, if that tells you anything. So I was I was after that. <laughs> um, really completely did everything on one account. Uh, created a new character and doing it again, but just at a much slower pace. Just yeah sometimes i all i do is literally just explore for the day when i'm on there playing so yeah man exactly. i'm absolutely loving it that's good man because i mean back when even when we first started the channel it's like it, it was literally something we always or the podcast it was always something we always were hyping up like we couldn't wait to get it so it's good man it's, i'm glad that you know basically you're enjoying it as much as we we anticipated even for me on a personal level I, man that team went above and beyond like they went you know, and sorry if you guys hear uh, construction going on. I'm, uh, you know, currently at the site where they're building the next uh, D Disneyland Avatar expansion. No, I just have some <laughs> a, a porch being built um, outside. But but hey, you know, so, yeah, you might hear some, you know, some hammers and such. So just please. Uh, I, I just couldn't wait any longer for us to do another episode. I was like, you know what? Even with that noise, let's just. Let's just get it done. But yeah, man, that game was amazing. And we still got more. So we're not 100% done yet with the game. There's two story packs coming later this year. So really excited to see what those turn out to be as well. Yeah, me too. Uh, I think that really helps my excitement level, knowing like we've got another one coming this summer. And then I think another one in the fall. Is that right? Exactly. So, I mean, unless, you know, barring any delays, we should have one. Yeah, probably just in a two or three months, maybe coinciding when the this Solek Journey comic issue ends, which I believe the last issue should be in July, issue six. So, you know, hopefully around there, right after that, we should be able to go right into this uh, first expansion. And then at some point in the fall, you know, the last one. And you mentioned delay. I mean, Avatar and delay. That just <laughs> and yeah, really no way, right? feasible <laughs> oh thank you for joining us snake eyes uh you watched fallout it's a really good show can't wait for season two yeah i actually checked out so far the first couple episodes really loving it so far i mean i love the game series and honestly love that it's canon i mean here you know we just always talk about avatar canon so of course canon is like important so it's cool it's cool that it's not just kind of doing its own thing separate from the games i like that they kind of you know they're going the extra mile to make it fit into the lore of the actual game series but yeah good to see you around here again snake eyes and for you know everybody else that's joining us all right man 
Uh, we're going to start before we get into the first issue of Soul X Journey. You know, we'll do the full breakdown on that and read it, read through everything. But let's discuss, let me pull it up here. You know, about, what was it, a week or two? They, you know, surprised us with this, like, concept art for this upcoming, you know, new Avatar experience at Disneyland. And um, I love it right off the bat because it's just including, like we mentioned, you know, hopefully they were going to add elements, you know, from the sequels into the existing Pandora world of Avatar. They could still do that. Like we had talked before, like we wish they would update, they could even update the video on the Flight of Passage ride to maybe include some new scenes, you know what I mean? But this one here, it's literally, I love that it's just taking like all the greatest hits from the second movie, you know, little elements of everything in this little confined space, but it works, man. So I really loved it. And then obviously Pandora and Otters was like right there, right there in the center. I was like, yes. They were cut from Avatar 2, but they're getting uh, justice done. Uh, how about you, man? What was your first impressions on the concept art here? The first thing I thought of was I immediately pulled up the concept art from Pandora, the world of the world of Avatar. Um, yeah. Disney World, because I was like, you know, I remember actually going to the land and having seen the art, and I was like, this is, this is realistically as close to that art as they really could have made it. Yeah. I mean, sure, they you're not going to be walking on a dirt-like trail, but within reason, <laughs> they're going to do their best, in my opinion, to recreate this artwork. So really, really excited because, I mean, just look how beautiful that is. Um, the only thing we really can see as far as, like, attraction-wise with to see actual land, which we know is the biggest attraction, is that yeah. boat ride, the giant boat ride. But I mean, does that boat ride go inside of the rocky area, the kind of the mountainside there? I mean, is there going to be anything else? There's no telling. But just the sheer beauty of it, Jerry, absolutely excited me. And then once I noticed those otters, I knew you would for sure be there day <laughs> one. Rope drop, racing to see the otters. Yes, especially because this one's only going to be six hours away from me. Unlike the other one, you know, which is like three days driving or, you know, maybe six hours in a, in a plane. But, yeah, uh, I'll be there, as, you know, hopefully day one. And like you said, it's just it's beautiful, man. And like, yeah, of course, like if we kind of go back for a second to the art from the one that we already know, like you said, they pretty much. Uh, knock this out to a T, you know, barring, like you said, like a little dirt trail here. Because I, I think right now, and it just clicked in my head, the art here, uh, at least to me, it kind of symbolizes like what this actually looks like on Pandora. Because let's not forget, it, this isn't just supposed to be some, you know, theme park attraction for Disneyland and that's it. Like, this is also incorporated into the canon of the story. So actually... I feel like what the concept art right here that Dylan Cole does is he kind of conveys what does this actually look like on actual Pandora, not what is this going to look like 100% at Animal Kingdom. You know what I mean? And That's a even, really, really good point. And even then, it just it knocked it out. But yeah, of course, so that's why you see like... You know, you, if you're, you know, you see all like the huge trees way in the distance and some spires whack there way in the distance. That's because this is what it looks like at, you know, in that spot on Pandora. So if we go back to the one now, I actually think like, oh, this is like in yeah, of, uh, uh, of course, like, you know, the co the what is it? The cove of the, the ancients right there. The big thing here. Maybe that's not going to be right here in just this concentrated area on Pandora. Maybe. Who knows? You know, maybe there's another one. But to me, it's like, what is this? What would this actually look like here by the reef village on Pandora? And I, I love it, man. I do, too. I mean, it's just beautiful. And that boat ride, like, I just can't wait to see, like, where that takes you, what else you get to see. Um, I like that one coast kind of gets more of Avatar 1 and the other coast is getting kind of Avatar 2. So I think that's great. I think that's a great variety. I'm glad they're not just trying to recreate 
the Animal yes. Kingdom attraction at Disneyland. I think this is a very smart move. Exactly. Because would it have been awesome to just have the one over there, which I personally still haven't gone to. I know you have. And obviously, you know, I've heard from everybody that, you know, Flight of Passage is one of the 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 number one attractions in that entire resort, including the other, you know, lands that they have, other everything, other parks. Um, so obviously still want to go there, but it's great, like you said, that it's going to be a variety. So everybody that's already gone to that, maybe maybe for years, maybe there's some people that are sick of it. You know what I mean? They're like, all right, you know, I've, you know, I've done Flight of Passage 100 times and the, that Nobby River journey. And this one will even give them, you know, they'll, they'll still come over here now because it's going to be completely different. So that's awesome. I still hope they update some elements of the other one, you know, to just try to also synchronize with some new things that we might see in these sequels apart from just the second one. But like you said, just first impressions, super happy it's different. And super happy that it just looks incredible and that we know from experience that they're gonna not knock it out of the park, no pun intended. So Yeah, and you know that reminds me like because the one at Animal Kingdom was made before the sequels were really nailed down like they are now. And now the, yeah. the scripts are finished, they have this land they can work on, so they you know, to me that offers more expansion or more like, hey, let's work these details in that we're going to see in future movies, maybe not even Avatar 3. And so that's exciting, too, because as happy as I am that the other park was done before Avatar 2 came out, I mean, still, that kind of takes away a little bit of it. They didn't know exactly the direction they were going with all of the sequels at that time. Exactly. And just like you mentioned, like, there were little things from the sequels that we didn't know at the time, like, for anybody that's done Flight of Passage, or even if you, you know, watch the video on YouTube like me, I'll raise my hand. Guilty. You've seen there the Elus before we knew what they were, the the Nalusa, the Tokun at the very end of the ride. It's Tokun, man. Now we know everything. And like you said, now that they really have all the other ones kind of locked down, designed, and everything, you know, what are they even gonna tease in this one that might tee up what's in four, what's in five? You know, like maybe. Not big things, but like a, a creature or something here that might be hidden here and there. Um, speaking of hidden things here and there, let's tra uh, transition to like little key moments that I liked. Just looking at this, um, obviously, the otters right there. The boat ride, like you said. So we'll get into, you know, more specifics on every uh, everything. Um, this is just quick glance. Bottom right. I think those are the marine uh, Ekron. So they're, you know, they're not actual the size of a of an Ekron. They're kind of like the ones you saw just flying around around by the by the water and everything. But to the bottom left, everybody in the chat, Andrew, since you've put in so much time in Frontiers, to me that does not look like the silhouette of an Ekron. That looks like a storm glider. Am I crazy? You're not crazy, but I don't because whenever I, I look at the silhouette of an Ekron, it's right away you know it's an Ekron. Like no right. matter if I'm looking at its side from the top from whatever, that does not look like a like an Ekron. That's because those are more like like what you think of a typical dragon wings. And recently, what had something like that was more of a, the storm glider in Frontiers of Pandora. So I'm like, oh, I wonder if you know Dylan Cole just kind of snuck that into the art or like we were just mentioning there's already going to be teases of like you know some other creatures and stuff that maybe you don't exactly know yet so that's pretty cool that is very cool and that's something i hadn't noticed like i i guess i hadn't zoomed in that much on anything except the uh pandoran otters there yeah <laughs> exactly but i, uh, I did see I did kind of notice something interesting with them. I went back and looked at their pictures and the art of Avatar, the way of water. Yeah. And I noticed in it, it talked like I'd forgot this because I don't remember everything, but it talked about how the, originally they were created to be in a scene with Tuke that was cut. Um, yeah. But Dill went on to say that they would still be included in like the, the larger scope of Canon of Avatar. And I was like, 
yep, this is this is that larger scope right here. Exactly, and yeah, because they got really far. Like the because the the images we see in the art book, they're not even just regular, you know, like concept like this, like concept drawing. They're pretty much like three D models, like fully fleshed out three D, yep. or at least in ZBrush or something. So they look like photo realistic almost exactly so that that scene maybe got pretty far along but then at, at you know at a certain point press for time they're like all right of the things we can cut you know maybe took teary playing with another animal that's you know you know that may, maybe the otters will pop up in three or any of the sequels because like they said it doesn't mean that they're not in the canon it's just they just didn't make it to that particular movie with that particular scene but here we see they're part of cal uh canon one of them chilling, just laying back like I wish I was right there by the little tide pool. Man, <laughs> sick, sweet. Um, but let's fully dive into like more on this, where it could be, and just like what are we looking at here? So, so let's kind of go through, you know, went down the rabbit hole, uh, so you guys didn't have to. Um, well, first of all, right off the bat, when we go back to the ride though, like this boat ride. What I liked here, and I think I mentioned it to you when we were first reacting to it when it released, is I like that this is an outdoor one. Like, I love the Navi River Journey the way it is over there, but that one's more for people that don't know. It's like an indoor dark ride, you know, and you do have some real elements, but a lot of it is like projection, like screen projections showing you like different, you know, creatures running around in Pandora and even some Navi, I think, maybe running around. And just at the very end, you have the you know, one of the best animatronics that Disney has ever done with the uh, the shaman, right? She's at the very end of the ride, right. and she's so lifelike and everything. And what I told you was, I, I so this one here was the concept art to the original one that's over there at Walt Disney World. And um, so I love that it's different, night and day, but that it's outside, and hopefully that just means they're going to implement a lot more animatronics instead of relying a lot more on the screens like they did on that first one. So it got me to think of like Universal Studios, they have a Jurassic World ride where you're kind of on a boat like this and as you're walk as you're cruising around, you see the dinosaurs but they're animatronics. So here's one for example like the people are on the boat and then like you'll see there you go like a dinosaur but it's moving and everything, it's an animatronic. So it's cool. So I hope, you know, like the otters are animatronics and some of these other ones that we see so that for me stood out like I hope that that's what that kind of, you know, represents. So that would be cool. And a difference, like you said, from the other one. So that's cool. I would like it as well. Um, you know, I don't know. If, I don't know if they can do it just due to cost. I know like the Shaman of Songs was insanely in depth and, you know, they could make animals for, I'm sure, much cheaper, but. I believe the cost on her was $23 million. So I don't wow. know if we'll get a whole bunch of animatronics or not, but if we do, if they can, if they can make them lifelike and cool, but maybe not near as functional as she would have to be, or maybe a little bit farther back. So you can get a, a nice look at them, but not super up close. I would love that, man, because yeah, that's something exactly. the other land is kind of missing is just kind of that feeling of, being alive, I mean, you can hear the animals all around you, but you get to see so little there. I'm with you on that. I, I would love, I would love to see a bunch of animatronics. I hope they can make that happen. Yeah. Well, let's start diving into what does this mean and why? What's this confusion? Land experience? What's going on here? So, it seems a lot of this one has been dependent, and why they've been so kind of like not really talking about it all too much. And in terms of like specifics, like where is it going to be? What is it? Land experience? Because it's been tied to Disneyland Forward, which is actually something that they came up with a few years ago. They first started uh, that they're going to pitch this or that. I mean, it's already. So they've been pitching this. And what it is, is Disneyland Forward is a multi-year public planning effort with the city of Anaheim to update existing development approvals, which will allow Disney to meaningfully invest in Anaheim for years to come and meet the future demands in entertainment. Uh, for just us Avatar fans, I want to know, how does this relate to Avatar? Basically, here on the right, and you see that image, right now you have Disneyland, and you have the Disney California Adventure, 
you know, the one with the orange and blue. And basically what they're trying to propose is get these with the Disneyland forward is that the city will now allow them to build more. So in areas where right now they maybe only have parking lots, uh, which is like right across DC, the ones that are actually filled in with color, that would be the new stuff, the new areas. So right there, possible immersive theme park. Um, you'll have a section that's going to be an extension of Disneyland, which is the ones with orange. So the top half of that new area and the bottom one would be an extension to Disney California Adventure connected through overpass, underpass, whatever they choose to do somehow like that. But they'll be connected and still be considered as an extension of that park. So let's zoom in a little more. <clears throat> and so here we go. Just the other day, on Wednesday, April 17th, it got approved. So it says, after three years of planning and pitches, the Disneyland Forward proposal is nearing the starting line of an ambitious, and, and, and listen to this, Drew, four-decade plan. Hey, as wow. av Avatar fans, I know we're, we're into the long game, but yeah, so Disneyland Forward is really forward. It's a, it, it, it's a four-decade plan proposal of, like, Everything that they want to do will not be complete probably until like 20 in the 2060s. But anyways, it's a that could that could bring nine new theme lands to the Anaheim theme park resort based on Avatar, Frozen, Zootopia and other Disney, Pixar and Marvel films like Black Panther, things of that sort. We'll get back to back Black Panther. The Anaheim City Council gave unanimous approval. OK, blah, blah, blah. Um. So yeah, with the image that they had shared before that, because like I said, this approved they just approved on Wednesday, so what two days ago, and they have a final approval on May seventh. If it's approved, then it would go into effect the next month in June, and expect in August at D twenty three when they do panels about what's coming up to the theme parks, expect a big thing about most likely this Avatar experience that's coming to Disneyland. And other projects that are going to come, you know, as part of this. Um, so anyways, they said about this land, we are excited about the stories our guests could experience at Walt Dis Walt's original theme park destination after approval of Disneyland Forward, including the chance to experience all new Avatar adventures with a visit to Pandora. Avatar is the latest example of how we are looking to create new and innovative ways to bring our powerful stories to life. Over the past decade, we've delivered massive immersive experiences all over the world, you know, with Star Wars, Avengers, Pixar, and more. And a little timeline of this. It was first announced in February 2023 in an earnings call. Iger previously stated that this Avatar experience would be a version of Pandora, the world of Avatar that's currently at Disney's Animal Kingdom. And then in March... A D23 post stated that the California experience would be as amazing as its Walt Disney World counterpart. Then, during the 2024 Morgan Stanley technology thing, is when Iger first called it a land. Later, Disney had to backtrack and reaffirm that the experience would be just that, an experience, not a land. And then, last November, a representative stated that the experience would be in Disney California Adventure. Once again, Disney later was like, we didn't say that. That's that's no official announcement was made. And in February, John Lando shared a photo of himself at Walt Disney Imagineering headquarters stating he was talking about the future. So that's our current timeline of this. So what does this all mean? Why, you know, here we go. I'll break it down for everybody. So let's zoom in on the, on the portions that are new. And obviously, you know, things can change here. Some of these are maybe placeholder little things. But here's a top-down map of what we're talking about. And then that one person said, right, that it would be part of California Adventure. Well, he was right. Because it's going to be on this bottom portion of California Adventure. You know, that's an extension to California Adventure. But it's only part of the Disneyland Forward, which they couldn't at the time 100% say this is where it's going to be and we got it locked because it wasn't even approved till two days ago. That's why there's been this whole, you know, where is it? What is it? And is it a land or an experience? I don't know. Let's zoom in a little bit more. So first of all, where is it? So if we zoom in a little bit on the top right where that purple is, it seems that's where the entrance is going to be and you're going to come down. 
obviously if you go up you're gonna go into the orange part that's the disneyland what's that first area right there that you're gonna come across it's not the avatar if, you, if anybody can see it before i reveal it what does that that zoomed in section look like especially right there with that weird thing on top of the big dirt brown spot nobody okay here we go that is the one that we're talking about with black panther that is actually the huge black panther that's you know statue that they have in wakanda so the first area you're going to come across is like a wakanda area okay what about after that well there we go right after the wakanda area that's where i think that is the new location for this avatar thing we just saw and let me bring up the because when you compare it to me that kind of does look like in a way the top down of this art unless i'm completely mistaken but pretty much if we go back to um uh what is it the walt disney world animal kingdom they connect the mountains with like these you know cables but you don't see them because they're covered you know to look like the vines I think something similar will be because you can kind of see that right there unless so those are just little bridges. But to me, unless I'm mistaken, Drew, that kind of looks like that's where it's going to be. Does that kind of look like it to you? It definitely could be. Can I propose we just cancel out that Black Panther part and just extend this up all <laughs> the way make, to the entrance? Just make the whole thing. <laughs> make, make it all the, uh, yeah, the uh, Avatar, please. But I'm hey, not gonna lie. When you when you first like showed this, I was kind of looking. I was like, "Is this whole thing gonna be Avatar? Is this whole thing gonna be Avatar?" I wish, I wish, but I mean, that still does look like a significant portion because I think we're only looking at a small thing here on the concept art. You know, even the original concept art for the original land was kind of only showing you the floating mountains area, but obviously not the shops, the restaurant, the you know the ride areas. So. So we're probably only looking at a small little portion here. So I hope it's still decently sized. It does look like it. But then if I continue on, I think there's even like, like a little landmark you can see. Like if we look where the people are standing and you look past, you can kind of see where I say it looks like you're on Pandora. You know how you can see even the ocean. It's extending past, you know, where we can see. And you can even see like some of those huge rocks that are out there in the distance in the ocean. I think right. that's what that represents right there. Like there might be this big water area there in the back to kind of make, give you the illusion that, you, you know, if you look back there, it, it's just going to look like, like the ocean basically. And maybe some of those rocks right there are, are going to be some of those, like the three brothers or whatever they called them. Who knows, you know, but just something to represent it. I could be completely wrong, but at least for me, I think this is where it's going to be and why they've been, so kind of, you know, not being able to tell you exactly where it's going to be because it all did depend on this Disneyland forward. And now that it did get approved, here we go. You know, it seems like this is their top priority because this is the first concept art they're showing you. I mean, this and I assume uh, Black Panther since it's like in the entrance. But hey, so who knows when? We don't know any timetables right now, but... It's so exciting, man, that we know this is coming. It looks awesome. And that's pretty much all the info we have at the moment. More, I'm sure, to come when D23 is here in a few months in August. But what do you think, man, with everything so far? Man, you've done your homework on this. I think it's very plausible <laughs> that what you just showed is, is, uh, is spot on, man. Um Oof, that could be exciting because come D23, we could get a model like we did for the other one. Like we yes. could really get a feel for everything that's going to be in this. Maybe where the show building would be. Like if there's an inside, whatever ride experience, whatever, you know, like you said, there's going to be a wind traders or something similar. There's going to be a Satuli canteen or something similar. But, you know, are we getting an attraction inside? Uh, probably. So, man, that's exciting. August isn't very far. I'm glad this has passed. And apparently they were quite confident in it or they wouldn't have just dropped this art on us. Um, like you mentioned just a couple of weeks back. So, 
Man, this is exciting. We could get some some big news about this very soon. Exactly. Like in like they said, we you know we've had an imaginaries uh, imagineering uh, people working on this stuff for three four years. You know they call it blue sky like concept art and you know working things out. So as soon as now they get the, like they got the thumbs up. Oh, you know they got stuff to show. It's not like this is they're barely coming up with this stuff. You know this stuff's been in the works. You've seen John Landau has been there. I'm sure they've already you know James Cameron's been around there, so he was very involved with the first one. So it's going to be exciting to also track this along with the journey of the movies we get the track you know the journey of this coming out and it's just a fun time right now for avatar fans man like yes it's a lot of waiting for certain things but these things are worth it i mean look at that man like that's definitely gonna be worth it well and you know it's not realistic like you mentioned there's a 40-year plan to develop all this area they can't make all nine of these areas at the same time so Mm -hmm. if you're correct and that is black panther leading into the avatar section in my opinion you've got to do the ends first so black panther's got to be worked on first because people have to go through that to get to more so maybe they'll work on avatar and black panther at the same time maybe they'll be the first two areas to open like that's exciting um i don't think they're going to make us wait 10 years on this land but obviously it's going to take some time even if they started construction tomorrow yeah um yeah because the first one i i I forget when they first announced it was like 2011 2012 it was like two or three years after the original movie and then it still took until i believe 2017 was opening year i believe i could be wrong so it was yeah it was like uh it was you know four to five years but that's definitely worth it i haven't been there yet i hope to go either late this year or may, oh, at least, you know, next year, the latest. Um, but you've gone there, and I know all the Avatar fans that have gone there. Everybody's loved it. I haven't heard one bad thing about it, aside from, obviously, the best ride is Flight of Passage. <laughs> That's, you know, it, it trumps the, the Navi River journey. But, I mean, other than that, it's just been nothing but glowing stuff on that. And, yeah, man, so I can't wait. This one's close to me, so... Once this is open, definitely we'll be going there as often as I can. And um, uh, we yes, will be Brindle. here visiting the reef people before we see Avatar Four. Mark my words on that. <laughs> but, hey, most likely, most likely, <laughs> I, I think so. I think it'll be order of release: Avatar Three, this land, and then Avatar Four. And who you know? Who knows? Who knows? We're going to have two lands and three movies. <laughs> <laughs> that is the pace we move at. Oh, uh, man. Uh, let's see. Brandon Lewis, I appear to have gotten here late. You did, but don't worry. You know, after this is live, you can go back because, yeah, we just kind of went into this. We detailed, you know, what we liked about it, where we think it, it's going to be, and all that. So, man, fun times. So, uh, let's see. Okay. So now, oh, one last thing. You did send me that when it does come to the other Pandora world of Avatar, you sent this over and let me know that, hey, somebody on Instagram posted that plushy tokens are now available at Pandora, the world of Avatar. So, yay. Uh, there you go. Round of applause. Now you can guys can go get your plushy tokens. Those are now available there. I only... I actually only knew these existed because of Christine there that's in our YouTube chat. Um, yeah. She posted a picture, I think, that she found on eBay. And then I believe it was like yesterday, Alloy Avatar was is there right now at uh, Disney, and she posted that she got one. So it's pretty cool. Nice. But yeah, it's cool that, you know, slowly but surely those sequel, you know, even merchandise is getting there. And I I still love, you know, we're going to do a whole episode in the future devoted to just Pandora, the world of Avatar, because I feel it hasn't been done justice. And obviously you saw with our little, you know, little research into just that little concept art. Now that this is the full land, we're really going to dive into everything. And one of the elements I love is that in the Wind Traders, a lot of stuff, it's really meant to be like if the the Navi artisans themselves crafted a lot of this merchandise that you're, that you're buying, obviously not the t-shirts and stuff like that, but a lot of like this, like, like uh, there's some, you know, 
plushies or some kind of like dolls that are even like oh this is what they would look like in the canon like in real canon so that's pretty cool that for some some things they do go like really in depth like that and it goes with the canon story of like that's there's another element right there the wind traders has literally been in front of our face since 2017 we still haven't even met this clan or the, you know this the, the, this society of navi whatever you want to uh, call it until you know next year's movie so but we've had a whole store because that's what they do they go around their traders they gather from different clans different regions around pandora and kind of sell them to you you know so it's pretty cool that is very cool and i imagine if you can't get a tolkoon at pandora the world of avatar just wait a few years until the new avatar land opens and they'll probably have one in every color you could dream of there you go. <laughs> uh, like what's going to be the creature uh, in this one? Because in the previous one, they, they have the, the Ekron Rookery, where you can kind of get an Ekron that sits on your shoulder in all these different colors. Is it going to be uh, an Elu, a Skimwink, <laughs> a Tokun? Like you said, what's it going to be this time? You know, that's funny. Uh, Pandoran Otters. Of I was course. about to say, I just looked at it, the, the guy chilling again. I was like, it has to be the, I, I have to get the otter, dude. The plushie, the, the shirts, all the otter the merch. Puppet. You can make it talk <laughs> to you. <laughs> there you go. All right. So now let's go into breaking down Solex journey. So I hope you all read issue one. If not, it's okay. We're going to go over it right now. But yeah, so this one was an exciting one. It's a character that we meet in Frontiers of Pandora. And this is before. So this is his journey getting to that point in time in the game. So I believe it starts right around the time of the, you know, the battle at the end of the first movie. So throughout these six issues, we're going to, you know, time's going to skip. I think even from, you know, one issue to the other, it could be like one or two years have passed. But yeah, it's going to be his journey. We're going to follow along. And hey, you know, he's part of a, a you know, a different clan. Uh, and, you know, it could be some interesting, cool new elements to the lore and stuff that we get introduced in this throughout this comic series. So I'm excited, man. Yeah. And I've also got to say, slightly off topic, but slightly on topic, um, Dusan, the guy that voices Sodek in the game, he's on Instagram and he's been interacting with the fans. Seems like a super cool guy. Sometimes he's on there reading pages from the comic. It's really cool just hearing that voice, which is so unique, uh, reading this comic. So just a shout oh, out to great. him. He seems like a really, really cool person. Man, that's pretty awesome. And yeah, I wish like we need those, you know, we need like motion comics, like with the audio, you know, it'd be awesome if you got you know, the actors, or at least people that sound like them, it'd be pretty cool, you know, watch videos of these comics, that these little limited series that we've had so far. It'd be pretty interesting, man. It absolutely would. I mean, I would love to be able to just play an audio file and listen to the comic. Exactly. All right, everybody, let's start diving into this. What's the little blurb that gets us into it? It is... The mighty Taruk Makto, joined by many clans of the Navi, went to war against the Sky People. Among them, a fearless warrior rode alongside his family and friends with the Ometekaya. As the war continued, he fought valiantly, only to return home to find tragedy. It's going to be a sad one, boys. Sad one. Let's see. All right, man, we get thrust right into it. And we got to say up front, we are not good with the Navi language. So a lot of this, please forgive me. Forgive Drew. Just uh, just be nice to us in the comments. We'll, we're, we'll try our best. Um, but yeah, so here we go. We're in 2154. Uh, the Battle of Ariam Alusing is over. I assume that's the battle it just means the uh, of the hallelujah mountains right yeah that's what that means okay so the sky people overwhelmed us and pushed through towards the tree of souls and there in pitched battle they would face taruk makto and the navi of many clans 
but not my clan. Dang, bro. Yeah, that's it's beautiful and brutal all at the same time. Exactly. Such a beautiful land, like a beautiful Ekron, but it's dead. The people are dead. <laughs> like it's horrible. My clan was already destroyed. At the Hallelujah Mountains, we gave all to our last. And here we go. I am Solek of the Throng. So there we go. His clan was the Throng. Hope I said that right. My village was on the path the sky people took to the Hallelujah Mountains. It is no more. I did not know until I returned from battle. Even in dying, the sky people take from us. Even when they are driven away, they drag our lives with them. Man, some powerful, powerful already like monologue right off the bat, man. Absolutely. It, it dives right into the heart of Avatar for sure. The heart of Avatar 1, I should add. Exactly. Which I love. I love that they're tying Avatar 1 into this awesome game that just came out. It's a good point to start because obviously it's, you know, it's a good point in time at the end of the first movie where everybody's like, oh, I, yeah, I remember that. You know, I remember those those events. So it's 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 good to go from there. And then we're like, okay, so now let's go on these years journey you know, from then on, but at least everybody's familiar with the starting point and very like right off the bat, like we said, with the monologue, it's already very deep and heavy. And it just seems like, you know, this is going to be somebody that's going to suffer maybe through the, of some PTSD, you know, some trauma of coming from some type of battle like that. You know what I mean? So interesting yeah, to I see that side. I took some notes as I was reading this, and that's you nailed it. That's one of the things that I noticed, and they really hammer home is the PTSD that he's suffering from. You know, living in a time and a place where there's probably no one to really help you with that, or is there? Exactly. So he continues This was my home. Here there was song and warmth. Here there were people of Awa. Now there is only me. Damn, man. And the art is great, by the way, so far. Right off the bat. I know we've mentioned in the past, some some different limited series, you know, have been have been a little better than others, especially when it comes to, like, maybe depicting the Navi themselves or the environment. But so far, I'm really liking this one, man. No, no, no real complaints for me so far. I'm really liking it. Same, like, this may not be my favorite art from everything we've had, but yeah. it's arguably the best, like, the best representation of the world. Exactly. Especially with the type of stuff, new elements that we we see here and we get introduced to, so it's, it's cool. Um, here we go. There is only me, and then snap of a twig or branch. The sounds of the forest are wrong. A chorus of injured trees snapping and cracking in the breeze. A sound I never heard before. And then he just, throughout this issue, you know, you're going to keep having those terrible flashbacks. Like, man, those those panels right here of just that, the explosions, the devastation from the Battle of the Hallelujah Mountains. It's crazy, man. It is. I really like how they did the flashbacks slash PTSD. It's just, it really drives home the issues going on inside of his head. It's almost like you can kind of feel it yourself. Exactly. No, I am not there. I am here. It is over. It is over. And now I have to. What is this? Is this another weapon of the enemy? What have they done to me? What? Help me. It's funny. He says help me. And then 
somebody at right after walks up and also saying help. Man, so far this is like I'm loving it so far, dude. This is great. It, it's yeah, it's uh, no butterflies here. We're not sniffing the uh, plants on Pandora. It's very <laughs> much like this is what happens with war. Exactly, not holding anything back. Like you said, the art itself, they really do like, you know, they're, they're doing a good job with the, the, the flashbacks and even just him and his expressions and you're just feeling kind of what he feels in that moment. And then so you get that person that walks up injured, help me. And then obviously, like I said, I'm going to butcher the name. Zuratri, Zuratri. You survived. I thought you were struck down. I, Solek, take me to Ewa. Take me to the Tree of Voices. You will be all right. Ewa will guide us. Ewa will show us what to do. You'll see. Help me connect. So there they connect. She is right. This is what I should have done right away. Commune with Ewa. Return to myself and my people and wash away the chaos of the enemy. Return to peace. And he just starts having like a crazy experience inside of there. And I love that this stuff is like being added more and more to the canon where we're now seeing that when you can connect like more of the I don't, I don't know if power is the right word, but of of what can happen when you connect in instances like this where you can start seeing different visions, but then different people, even or different Navi, I mean, even from way in the past, man. I love this element. I do too. It kind of helps make Awa not be as mysterious, but yet yeah, it's still mysterious at the same time. It's not like we have a full grasp of what AWA is, but like we're learning more and more. And they've really explored this heavily in the comics. Yeah. What is this confusion? Another attack? Where are my ancestors? Here. The sons of my sons are the fathers of your fathers. Once I was lost in a dark thunder of war. You... Your man, I'm gonna try here. How Nutuun, how Nutuun, yeah, the great hero of old. You honor me. Whose name do you hold? I am Solek, Te Elusa Kiro Itan, but I am lost. I gave everything to the battle against the sky people, I failed. I do not deserve to call myself a warrior. They swatted me, all of us, aside like insects. They flew onto the Ometekaya tree of souls, which they intend to destroy. What can I do now? Once I bore the burden of great pain, great loneliness. Once I walked the path of Panuyu, look there, the promiser. Your deeds are remembered in legend. I... I would never think to compare myself to you. So like I said, I love this, man. It's kind of like, it's giving me uh, vibes in a way of like, uh, you know, when you can see uh, in Star Wars and stuff, when you can see like the previous force ghost that can, you know, come and offer you, you know, like words of wisdom and stuff. It's pretty, it's pretty cool that we get to see some of these past, you know, important Navi in, uh, in history. It's pretty cool. It is cool, and something I'm curious about is, like, and maybe this is Awa's doing, but obviously he's connected at various times. I mean, he, he's a grown Navi of of warrior fighting age, and so he's connected at various times, but he's never come across this guy who is the founder of the clan. So it's interesting now, like, you know, some reason this time when he connected with Awa, this is who he's able to commune with. So I don't understand exactly how that works, but 
It's very interesting. It, it, it kind of makes me think it's it, it, it kind of like AWA helps you in terms of once you connect, shows you what you might need instead of what you think you might want. So maybe, you know, or, you know, so maybe because he needed this guidance, you know, this is kind of like what's presented to him because it knows that this is what's, you know, what's best, this guidance here. I mean, I don't know, because even when we go back to the end of the way of water, you know, when they connect and they see that they am again, was that, you know, fulfilling their wish of what they wanted to see was their son? Would they always see their son when they connect at all times? Or was it kind of like it knowing that they needed that closure in a way? Interesting. It's definitely a, it's definitely something to think about. I climbed a tall peak of, you know, the Hallelujah Mountains. And there I held the blossom of the, man, they're, okay, Flamingo Orchid. I was about to say, okay, because they're killing me with these. <laughs> they're, they're, they're killing me with these, man. Which faces those who would tread near. I dreamed what it dreamt. The legend says that from there you saw the lights of the forest below. That you found the spot that would become our home. I tamed the fearsome, uh, fearsome uh, Palulukan. Yes, my mother sang of it to me when I was a child. <laughs> that was that was kind of funny. He's like, I, you know, I did this. He's like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where you know you found her at home. I also trained or tamed this Thanator. It's like, All right, okay, cool. <laughs> I also did yeah. this and this. It's like, all right, man. That kind of, that's something I don't know a lot about. So that was something that I found very interesting. Like someone besides Neytiri who's ridden a Paul Luke. And so, you know, like at one point I kind of thought that riding one of those might be just as rare as almost being Taruk Makto. So it's interesting to see that some Navi are able to ride them. It seems it still is very rare. It just doesn't have, like, the moniker, you know? Like, we know of the, you know, the, you know, the Taruk Makto, because that's the basically the apex predator of the skies. But we do know, like you were saying, the Thanator, at least what we know right now from lore, is the number one apex predator of the land animals. So, in a way, like, that's also a big, you know... Uh, achievement right there almost like the other one probably not as much because obviously you're not recognized as something you know that all these different clans are going to come you know and, and and heed your call but it's you know i mean who else have we really seen besides Nateri? and now we know this guy i don't even know if there's any more that we know of i mean i'm sure there are but it's probably just as rare so that's kind of cool when we think back on it in the first movie you know, Jake tamed the apex predator of the sky, and Nateri in the same movie, the apex predator of the of the land. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's definitely nothing to sneeze at. A uh, not V riding in to battle on a Thanator, like wow. Um, yeah, there's definitely a stigma, like you said, around Taruk, where he actually brings all the people together, and it's there's more to it than simply him riding a Taruk, but still insanely impressive to be able to tame and ride one of these exactly i walked in darkness and death and darkness and death walked with me i walk with death but i do not want to i want to help my people live is all hope gone look there I clothed myself in the armored shells of the mighty, I swear, uh, su Sudasum. And these are like the, the Curtis crab, right? Or, so, or, or Yeah. My, okay. Uh, and I entered the lair of the Nantang. I dreamed what it dreamt. And right here, we actually have you sent me this over. For like a little example, you actually seen 
another clan. This is from the Taruk flight of uh, uh, first flight, right? Taruk the first flight. Yes. Uh, yep. S- uh, yep. Uh, I believe it's the t- uh, is it the Tiponi clan? Yeah. yeah. They actually wore them, you know, as well. So obviously here this is like the stage show, but that's supposed to represent that, like what he's talking about. So just to give you kind of like a, you know, mental image of of what that could be. So it's pretty cool that we've already seen it also years ago and, you know, another clan also, you know, using that as, as armor. It's pretty cool. They would, you know, just use the shell of this creature as uh, the different armor pieces. That's uh, pretty interesting. Yeah, as the comic kind of goes, it's almost like we're they're really doing a good job at working that truth to first flight lore and clans into this comic as well, which I think is cool. To, again, tying everything together a bit more. Yeah, and showing you even if at times you know we had some separate things like some comics here in the stage show here they weren't they weren't exactly connecting or you didn't see you know where exactly they connected but like you said at least this comic it is showing you everything's canon that they've given us and you know here's a little bit of this element that you've seen here and and then here so it's it's cool that now you kind of do see that that connection kind of weave through just naturally so it's it's pretty cool all right i know the story as well is there something about them i never understood the sons of my sons are the fathers of your fathers. Look there. I stood at the western edge of our land, where the tales of midwinter stars dip into the sky. Yes, and there your journey ended. You returned to the forest and founded our clan all those years ago. How can I honor your name? How can I preserve what you began? I awaken with my questions unanswered. I feel no reassurance. And now it is too late for answers. I can already see she is gone. Zuratri? Man, that must be just because we've never seen, you know, obviously somebody pass away as they're connected to the Tree of Souls. I wonder what, you know, what kind of uh, repercussion that would have at all. That's. Yeah, I wonder, like, how quickly she's able to upload her latest memories since she's been there. I hope it's one of those things where, like, if you're already connected, you're already at peace. And then you don't even realize anymore that you don't go back to, you know know what I mean? You're kind of now just there at peace. I hope it's one of those ways or those things. You almost seamlessly transfer from living to being in AWA and never almost realize what happened. Yeah. Because some of them don't even know they have passed. Remember there was the... um, Yeah. One of the other comic series, was it Neytiri's sister, uh, Sawanen, that that didn't really know that she had passed? Yeah. So that's also interesting that some of them don't realize. Uh, maybe it just depends on the circumstance of how they, how, you know, how it happens. Uh, that they don't even realize that they're gone. They just kind of, you know, this is their new reality. That's that's interesting to think about. Well, and we've seen with Nateam that you don't necessarily just meet the people within AWA at the very end of their life. Like, they got to see him uh-huh. as a young boy again, so... It's it's interesting. Yeah. I wonder if, you know, hope one day we'll kind of get, you know, this lore ex- fully explained of how this stuff even works. Um, but or just keep it a mystery like that. And it just, you know, keeps it interesting as well. Just keeping it a mystery. Yeah, you know, something on it's as a one panel before this one. Um, when he first comes back out of being connected. Um, I don't know if it's just an art error, but it looks like on his choker, like you can see his RDA dog tags. Oh, yeah. (laughs) 
Oh yeah, Seems and it's not there on the set in the, on that next panel right next to it. They're gone. Yeah, right, and he shouldn't like, really have sure. any at the moment. Yeah, I thought that was that was interesting. It's probably an element that's going to be, you know, implemented in a, in a further issue. Like maybe when he start he does start taking out some some RDA, he'll start connecting them first to that that choker. But yeah, that's a. Huh. I didn't even catch that. So good eye, man. Good eye. Well, I actually just realized in the next one that you had previously up, you can, if you zoom in, um, he has him in it as well. <laughs> oh my God, you're just looking at the Joker. Oh man, <laughs> that's insane. Wow, that's crazy. Well, there you guys go. I'm I'm sure you heard it here first. <laughs> hey, I'm not complaining. This art, this art looks phenomenal. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Aside from that little, like I said, it's probably an an element that comes up later in the issues, and just with the pipeline, maybe you know things got a little little muddled, but it still looks good. So far, still amazing on the art. All right, a whispering rain falls. I think it was wrong of me to ask how to save that Navi and the others. They could not be saved. How Nutun must have seen me as a child who does not understand the world. A fool. Asking to heal the dead. I am that fool. Better warriors than me perish today. I did not deserve to survive the battle of the Hallelujah Mountains. They are still there on the floating peaks and I wait. He said he was lost in war. He said he had to walk a path. Man, I love these panels right here, man. These are great. They're beautiful. Truly. Um, he was lost as I am, and he did great deeds. They began right here, right where I stand. Maybe Ewa showed me his path because I must climb too. Maybe some of my people are still on the mountainside. The ancestors never speak directly. The blossom could mean anything. Or maybe I am being a fool again, hoping for something that is impossible. Either way, there it waits. The words of my ancestor echo in my ears. If our Sahik were here, she would ask if I really listened. Our fierce Olo Ekdan, he would ask why I hesitate. There is only one answer. Man, another great panel. What are you guys thinking that in, uh, everybody tuning in so far? Like, are, are, are you guys as impressed with the story, the art? What do you guys think so far? Brandon Lewis, Christine. But man, Drew, this is, this is good stuff, dude. Yeah, I, I was naturally drawn to this character because if you play Frontiers and you've gone through very much of it at all you're very familiar with him and again like he he's visually a very interesting character he has such a the voice actor has such a good voice and portrays him really powerfully and so just to see like start to see the journey of how he gets to where you interact with him is just really cool yeah man this is th this is great My Ekron fell in the battle. If I am to reach the mountaintop, I must do so on my own. The trees are bent and slippery in the rain. Uh, but the spring of the... I don't know if that's... The boughs? The bows? Lifts me higher with each leap. I need no Ekron. I will fly alone. In battle, I saw a machine of the sky people caught in roots like these. They burned their way out and fell, smashing themselves on the ground far below. To them, everything is an obstacle or an enemy.
The climb is difficult. Up here, the rain turns cold. But the mountain is not an obstacle. It is not my enemy. And this 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 one's great too. He just looks over, he sees, you know, this uh this crashed RDA ship right there, and just once again another quick, you know, flashback with the, the, the trauma that he has. Man, this is yeah. I love this so far. It is and in this next panel you can just see the agony in his face just fighting those memories. And then he's just like, No. The battle is done. I am not there with them. I am here alone. No screaming metal. No roaring flames. No cries of the injured and dying. The only sound is the rain. I rest and listen. The day will reach its end soon. If I am to reach the peak in the moonless hour, I cannot rest long. That'd be a cool little spot right there, man. Just like a little nook on one of the mountains as you're climbing up, man. That view must be incredible. <laughs> Just as a little Absolutely. side note. I climb on, and while I cling to the rock, my doubts begin. There are no survivors here. It is cold. I am injured, and the climb is very hard. And then here we see some, uh, what are these, the Tetra Terrans, I believe? Yeah. They fly by, looking to attack for a little bit. He holds on. This must be wrong. I misinterpreted the message of Awa. I wish I could talk to the Sahik. But I am not far now. What would I say of myself if I began this climb and did not finish it? These are not obstacles. My doubt is the obstacle. You know, and this made me think, hey, this is kind of a real life scenario of why doing Ichnamaya is important versus just showing you can be become a warrior and tame an Ikron. Like this guy is putting those skills to use and then some right now. Yeah, and in, in it, I like that it's a rite of passage because it, it seems those are, you know, especially when you're living this world and you're a Navi, to have that discipline and that perseverance because that's like a huge obstacle. And it's, it's kind of like one of those things, like once you can overcome that, it kind of makes it also a life lesson that you can kind of overcome anything because your biggest obstacle is not even maybe the physical aspect of it. It was like the mental aspect of accomplishing it. So it's pretty cool, pretty cool lessons right there. Absolutely. I reach the peak. My limbs are heavy and aching. The air is thin and cold. There are a few minutes of moonlight left. Somewhere in the distance, great flames leap into the sky. Another great view. But from here, I can see another light. The light of the Tree of Souls. It still stands. You know, and here, for me, oh, that sorry. kind of helped. No, for me, that kind of helped to show the scope of the battle. I mean, we saw the Battle of the Hallelujah Mountain, so we saw it from the movie aspect. But here's a warrior who fought in that battle, but he didn't even know the Tree of Souls still stood you know he knew they repelled the rda but it just shows how big that battle actually was yeah like it wasn't all just concentrated in one little area like you said it took over a huge you know land mass so that's <laughs> a very interesting point right there you brought up man here where my ancestors stood i see the tree of souls alive and strong I see the sky people driven from our forest. Climbing, as I was told, brought me this vision. Standing among the blooming of the... Lord, Oh, God, they're killing me with these. 
But yeah, you, the one we mentioned, the one we mentioned earlier, the Lord's Lord Seow. Flamingo Flamingo Orchard, is that the one? Yeah, that's, that's, Flamingo <laughs> Orchid. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> oh man. I will say in terms of that one, this is one of the hottest the hottest hardest uh comic series when it comes to that because other ones were a little more forgiving this one's like no 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 you will say this so you will say it like this you will know it by its proper name you will <laughs> speak not me <laughs> you're right <laughs> oh man i will question it no further i will walk the path of panuyu uh which was like i believe it was the translation was the promiser what it will bring to me what it will make of me is for Awa to decide to be continued. Man. What an issue, man. You know, I'd like to know a little bit more about what the promiser means exactly. I know that, you know, that was introduced by the person, the Han, I don't remember his full name. Yeah. Um, that he talked to within Awa as he was on that path of the promiser, but I'm just kind of curious what exactly that means. It may be, hopefully it's something they elaborate more as he's on this path. He may be, it will elaborate on it himself. Cause he, you know, we just got like, Oh, I know that, you know, my mother told or saying that to me or, or, or I know this, but it would be cool if we get told some of some more of like, what that entails and it's probably what they're going to do it's probably just teased right now and as he maybe walks through more of the path especially if there if there's maybe parallels he'll be like oh yeah just like in the story where he did this or or the, or you know the promiser is supposed to do this so that's uh <laughs> the one that was promised <laughs> game of thrones <laughs> but uh <laughs> but but yeah man i really love that first issue what do you guys think in the chat I think it was a good, a great start to, to this. And then look, here we go. Issue two is already on the cover. Him, uh, uh, Thanator. So, you know, in the face of fear. And that one's already out, but we're obviously we're gonna cover it next time. We're playing catch up a little bit, but, but yeah, man, I'm excited. It's a, uh, it's a good one so far. Yeah, and I think we're only just. A handful of days, three, four days away from uh, issue three actually dropping. It's been kind of nice because these are actually coming out on time so far, not delayed. So that's actually really <laughs> oh, fun. Let's let's please not bring my own our own PTSD back from the release of <laughs> freaking the high ground. Jesus, we read part hey, and, one and then we read part three before we read part two. Oh man, that was wild. <laughs> Uh, oh, also man. shout out on Instagram live to Amar A2 um, they made a very good point the artist for this comic is named Gabriel Guzman and he's actually on Instagram as well under at Gabriel Guzman comics and the other person I wanted to shout out was the colors for this issue because I thought the colors looked really good like yeah. the art's nothing without this phenomenal coloring and uh, his name is Michael Atea so unsure if he's on Instagram as well. Definitely, we'll 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 figure that out before the next time, and that way we can have maybe links to their profiles so you guys can show them some love along our journey of covering the comic. But uh, loving the start so far, the art, the colors, like you said, um, yeah, man, the story, it's it's great. It's deeper than I thought it was going to be just right off the bat. So that's. It's pulling no punches just immediately. Like you said, it's not one of these just like, oh, you know, we're in Pandora again. Like you said, we're, you know, like, look at this butterfly. It's it's uh, hard hitting stuff. We, we you know, talked about it touched on PTSD, uh, getting through your own mental obstacles. Like just in this one issue, that's 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 pretty great, man. I love when they when it, when it goes a little deeper, you know, than just like surface level. And our plan is, if I'm not mistaken, next Friday we're diving right into issue two, correct? Correct. Yeah, so we uh, 
Hope to be right back. We're going to be consistent right, as much as we can, as long as life doesn't get in the way. But other than that, uh, yeah, we're going to try to be consistent on a weekly basis. We already have different plans of, you know, what topics can be for different videos. We're going to deep dive into a lot of stuff. Hopefully you guys are into it. You know, like we'll keep covering these issues as they come out. Once we catch up, we'll wait for them. You know, obviously have to wait for the further ones to come out, but we'll deep dive into the other park, the movies, the just different aspect of Frontiers of Pandora, like fully going into that story, even divide like sectioning it off region by region, you know, uh, that looking at the creatures and what characters and clans you met in each specific region, just pretty much diving into everything Avatar. So as long as you guys are into Avatar, hopefully you guys will enjoy this journey. And hopefully these two topics today, you know, was or were enjoyable for you guys on our, you know, our welcome back episode to covering this stuff. Uh, I'm fully excited. And it pretty much it's the start of our journey here on this podcast, you know, to get to Avatar 3. It's still a bit away, but it's going to be fun. All the little nuggets we get along the way, you can always, you know, we're going to cover them here. No matter if it's just one still image, you know, we'll talk about it for like an hour. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, and that's a very good point. It is. It really is our journey on the way to Avatar 3. And something I really appreciate is that there's. it doesn't matter how long it is that we haven't made one of these. People still show up and contribute in chat. And that's always fun. Like I enjoy seeing what you guys have to say. So we appreciate you guys listening. Because honestly, without you guys listening, it's just literally me and Jerry talking to each other. And, you know, we like to hear you guys' input as well. Exactly. Oh, Brennan Lewis, you just reminded me. Yeah, so it might be tweaked to a different day next week if we if we can possibly do it because it is my son's birthday. But just like Brennan Lewis, he, we're I'm taking him to the re-release of the original Alien. So I've never seen it in theaters, and obviously he hasn't seen it. So I'm excited for that. Um. Plus, they'll give us a sneak peek of the next one. But, yeah, so we'll, you know, we'll announce what it is. But it is coming next week because I just want to talk Avatar, man. I love talking uh, to you, Drew, about Avatar. Everybody here on the chat. I mean, it's always fun. Like you said, man, we've been gone for a long time. And it's, in a way, it's almost like we never left. <laughs> you see, some of the same faces are here. It's 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 incredible. This community is is just great. Yeah, absolutely, man. And hey, I'm flexible if we need to bump that up to Thursday or move it back to Saturday. Either one of those days works for me. So we'll definitely get it worked out and uh, get another episode coming soon. Exactly. Hopefully on a just weekly basis. And um, if you also if you guys have any suggestions of topics, I mean, shoot them on in, you know, while we're doing some of these episodes and you never know. We, it could be, you know, what we focus on in a future episode. You know, we got a long journey. We got to fill in gaps here and there, but we will start getting stuff. We know, you know, in August, we just talked about in D23, we should get more info on this land towards the end of the year. Maybe as they did, we kind of have to backtrack. How did they market Avatar 2? So I think I have a good idea of how it's going to go. I believe towards the end of this year, maybe even at D23, because they're not going to have a D23 next year like they did have the year that Way of Water came out. Maybe they'll show the first concept art there and release it online, or they'll wait till the end of the year, December, like they did for Avatar 2, where the previous year before release, they started dropping a few of those amazing Dylan Cole concept arts, you know, for the Way of Water. It was like Jake and Atiri standing and they were overlooking the whole you know the reef village and the metagaina region that was awesome and you know jerry made a good point before we started the show tonight like the lead up um to avatar 2 was a lot of fun for us so i'm just really going to enjoy this ride as we start to lead up to avatar 3 even though we're still a good ways away it's really just a fun ride to enjoy because then after Avatar 3, you know, there's going to be a break and it's it's probably be a while. So just enjoying this time between two movies coming just a few years apart and uh, 
Yeah, man. I'm excited to see what Avatar has for us in the meantime. Exactly. And the, oh, here's one little uh, little piece that Avatar put up on uh, the official Avatar account put up on Instagram. I thought it's a pretty, since we're covering the comic, it's pretty interesting here. It's kind of like just a behind the scenes on the design of him for the for the comic. And actually now I cannot stop looking at the choker because <laughs> now the tags are even right there. They were on the cover of this issue where he's not supposed to have them yet. Now I'm like, was he? Is he supposed to have them already? I don't think so. They kind of come and go throughout the issue, so <laughs> we'll ha- we'll have to ask. Uh, we'll have to ask somebody that's involved with it. All right, you know, solve the big mystery here. But yeah, let's read some of this little. You know, let me read some of these little blurbs. I I, I find them pretty interesting. So we have the. Uh, you know, the asymmetric shoulder guard should have, you know, <laughs> asymmetry somewhere. <laughs> so let's do that. Uh, leave the necklace as is and build on it. So there we go. Uh, you know, it's supposed to get even bigger. We already got it right there, but probably it's going to become more elaborate as well as it goes along, maybe including even the tags. Uh, more powerful on neck instead of chest incorporate x shape across chest into neck piece stay away from breastplate shape it's too similar to the metgaina uh the metgaina toa guard huh. and then the arm guard should be protecting the inner arm like the leg guards are and the most interesting one is this one right here where it's saying to take something out it's eliminate the diaper style hip fabric. This is a silhouette reserved for the wind traders. Huh? So there you go. That's pretty interesting right there. Will we see some wind traders in this very comic series in upcoming issues or just, you know, their, their look in the upcoming movies and things of that sort. So I thought that was a, a interesting little, little blurb right there. It is. It, uh, it'll be interesting to see if we're going to see more in Frontiers, if we're actually going to get revealed that there is a wind trader in Frontiers within the game. Exactly. We all fully dive into into that, uh, but she is at the Aranahe Home Tree. If you guys are playing Frontiers of Pandora, um, kind of like on the outskirts of home tree, if you kind of run around and then get to some of the areas where you can climb up the sides, you're going to see her little area up there. Not much. It's just, uh, she's kind of just like a little shop, right? Where you can kind of get some, some items from her. Yeah. You can earn beads from her and then those allow you to buy essentially what's in the store. So that way you don't have to spend real world money on store items. Well, there you go. But she does uh, say, like, may the winds treat you well. She's a traitor. And then uh, the official concept artist of the of the game on, I believe, Art Station, they revealed that she is indeed uh, a w- part of the wind trader. So she is our first look at a wind trader. Obviously, I don't have it here, but we will cover it in an upcoming episode where we fully dive into frontiers of pandora but yeah it's good that we're already seeing all the all the synergy man like we said it's it's we're gonna see it more and more they did say elements of frontiers is even gonna make its way into avatar 3 it could just be a little scene where they kind of you know we're just do a fly by or uh, you know flying over the, the some regions that we are playing in in frontiers uh, so it's gonna be interesting to see the different elements from the different mediums kind of like, you know, come together. It's pretty cool. Absolutely. But that is pretty much it for us for this episode, guys. Thank you so much for everybody that's tuning in right now. There's over a hundred, a hundred of you guys tuning in. Thank you so much, especially for being gone so long. Like it's just so great to see that support. And we hope you enjoyed this episode. So, uh, Drew, any last parting statements from you before we, before we take off or any, you know, questions in the chat, anything you guys want to drop right before we leave, you know, just drop them on in. 
just make sure you guys read issue two before our next one, because that's what we're going to be covering mostly. And uh, issue two is even better than issue one, in my opinion. So I'm super excited to dive into that with you. You know what, man? I think next week issue three drops. I'm does, wondering yeah. if we should we should probably just do a double double whammy and just cover both and fully catch up. What do you guys in the chat think? Issue two and three next week? I think so. I think it'll fill it out more. So yeah, I think that's what we'll do, man. And that'll be a new one. Like you said, we read issue two, but even issue issue three at the moment is going to be new to everybody. So that's going to be really cool to just cover that right away. All right. Brennan says, yes, please. So, of course, <laughs> now we got to do it, man. All right. All right. Anything else, Drew, before we leave? If not, thank you for showing up, guys. And I appreciate all the support. And we'll catch you guys next week. I think that's it for me. Just, yeah, I echo the same sent sentiments. Uh, appreciate you guys a lot. So excited to talk more Avatar, more Frontiers with you guys next week. All right, everybody. See you next week and read issues two and three if you get the chance. If not, obviously, we read through them, you know, on the podcast itself. So, all right. See you later, guys.